What's up everyone? Welcome to Yoga with Adrian. I'm Adrian and today we're taking it off the mat and into the kitchen, learning how to make a traditional yogi tea. So this is really special to me, one of my favorite drinks because it really takes me way on back to when I was first introduced to the practice of yoga and first fell in love. Also way back to my yoga teacher training days, but also way back to traditional Indian medicine or Ayurveda. Thanks for joining me. Let's get started. Alrighty, my friends, so yogi tea is very similar to chai. In fact, these two teas, you know, are pretty much the same thing. Although the yogi tea, the traditional uh, concoction, really focuses on the herb. So a chai is kind of like you fill it with, you know, some extra milk and some extra sugar, and it's really great. Same ingredients, but um, this traditional concoction is really focusing on the herbs. It's a six ingredient recipe plus your water and per you know the Ayurvedic um, science or tradition, everything is there for a reason. So uh, the tea is very warming. It's super awesome for digestion, circulation, and everything there again is for a purpose. So let me introduce you to our six ingredients. All right, so the first ingredient is black peppercorn. Great for the sinuses, great for circulation, awesome for digestion. It's also really great for the skin and respiratory system. Black peppercorn is awesome. All right, next we have the clove, whole clove. Obviously really warming, aromatic. It's really great as an anti-inflammatory and really, really great high in antioxidants. Just also adds to a little bit of the taste. All right, next we have the cardamom seed, and this is a little seed pod that is actually a derivative of the ginger family, Ginger Rogers. She popped one of these out when it, just kidding. Um, and it is amazing. It's, it's so aromatic. Just the smell alone reminds me of being like back in 18 or 19 in my teacher training. So awesome. Great for heartburn, uh, great for balancing out acidity in the stomach. Super awesome for bloating, for gas. Who doesn't want to tend to that? Am I right? Um, and yeah, it smells really good as well. All right, next we have cinnamon, and we have a whole cinnamon stick here, so not the powder. And cinnamon has so many wonderful qualities. Again, really great for digestion. It's very warming, so soothing for the respiratory system. Um, if you've ever wondered about the benefits of cinnamon, look it up because there are so many studies that show that uh, cinnamon has helped, you know, just with balancing blood sugar, uh, it's helped reduce symptoms of diabetes, uh, heart disease, like so much stuff. So check it out. And we're gonna go with the whole cinnamon stick to also provide a little bit of flavor for our tea. All right, next up we have ginger root. And ginger root is really like the MVP uh, in Ayurveda. It has so many wonderful benefits, great for all systems go, really wonderful for digestion as well. This one in particular, great for joints, arthritic pain. Also really great for a scalp. So just a slice of ginger and a cup of warm water, super awesome when you're suffering from cramps. And yeah, ginger root is like the queen bee here. All right, last but not least, we have our black tea. This is the ingredient that really just brings it all together, synergizes all the other ingredients. It can be really good for focus and concentration for some, not all, because it is caffeinated. And of course, you can gauge how much caffeine you want by the amount of time in which you choose to steep it in your pot. All right, the next few steps are super simple. You're gonna to wanna to boil some water. So I have some boiling water on the stove already. And while that is happening, you're gonna to wanna to do three more simple steps before you throw everything in your pot. Okay, so the first one is you're gonna to want to make your tea with love in your heart. So even if you're not really feeling love, we're just gonna take a quiet moment to take a deep breath in, inhale lots of love in. Feels good, and then just exhale lots of love out. Check, sweet. All right, the next thing is, for the cardamom pods, you're gonna wanna split your pods. Never thought I'd say that. So you're gonna take a knife, take the pod, take a knife, and rather than using the sharp knife to cut your pod, you're just gonna take the flat edge of the knife, for the flat side of the knife, put it on the pod, bring the opposite hand on top, and then just press down, almost like we do with garlic, till it pops or splits a little or a lot. And then I prepped uh, some cardamom seeds here, pods open, and as you can see, they kind of have fallen apart, and that's great because we're gonna strain them out later. 
So those are ready to go. The last thing you wanna do is slice your ginger. And I just wanna point out that you do not have to peel the ginger because we're gonna strain everything out anyway. So you just slice your fresh ginger and then it's ready to go. Alrighty, so now we're ready to make our tea. We have a boiling pot of water. I put two quarts water in here, um, but you can do different things based on how much tea you wanna make. I like to make a big batch. It really fills the whole house up with a wonderful smell. And then you can save it because you can enjoy this tea hot or cold. So we have our boiling H2O here. The first ingredient I'm gonna drop in uh, are my peppercorns, about 20 of these for this batch. You don't have to be super specific unless you really want to, uh, but around 20, just drop them in and watch them dance. It's cool. Next up, we have our whole clove. So for the clove, about 15, again, doesn't have to be super specific in my opinion, but just around 15 and you can watch them dance as well. Next up, we have our cinnamon. Depending on how much cinnamon you like, you can do three to five sticks. So we're doing three today, just one, two, three, dropping the whole stick in. And then finally, our glorious cardamom seeds. They've been split, so they're nice and loose. And we're just gonna drop those in and watch them dance, and about 20 of those. All right, next up we have our fresh ginger, about eight slices here. Again, you can amp up the ginger or tone down the ginger uh, based on what you like. Um, I like a lot of ginger personally, like to get the healing effects of that ginger in my stomach, so great. And then we just kind of let this go for a couple minutes. It's already starting to turn a different color and dance. You definitely want to keep it rolling, <laughs> the boil rolling. Um, just for a couple minutes and it's already starting to smell super awesome and amazing, really great. All right, after you've allowed these ingredients to come and dance together for a little bit, you're ready to add your tea. As I said before, I have a tea bag here, but you can use loose tea. You're just gonna drop that puppy in and you can take a little spoon if you want and just kind of move it around and stir. All right, oh, and it already looks so beautiful. All right, after you've stirred it, We'll put a lid on it and we'll let it brew for 30 minutes at least. You can also turn the heat down a little bit and walk away and just enjoy the smell. And really you can let it go for two to three hours. It's really nice, but you just wanna be careful about your caffeine level if that's something you're concerned about. So we're gonna let this brew for 30 minutes and then come back and strain it. All right, so it's been about 30 minutes. I have my strainer here. You wanna make sure you have a strainer that is small enough to catch everything. And I'm just gonna slowly pour my tea over the strainer into another pot. Or if you have a pitcher that works, you can do that as well. I'm just gonna pour a fair amount in. Mm, it smells so awesome. And then slowly Take this back. If you have anything extra, I like to bottle it up or I like to give it away as presents too for friends, just little jars. And then I just take this out, whatever you caught in the strainer, you take over to the sink. And yes, this is amazing, our yogi tea. Okie doke, so let's try our tea. I'm gonna ladle it into my mug uh, since I have it in a pot here, but sometimes I'll pour it into uh, something over the sink, even uh, big mason jars is nice. Has a beautiful color. Oh my gosh, yes. So we used to drink this in between my teacher trainings and I think this came over into America via Yogi Bhajan in the late 60s who served it to his students, his American students here. Uh, it smells amazing. So typically we drink the Yogi tea either as is or you can sweeten it with a little honey. So I'm gonna put a little honey in mine and then you would also add a little bit of milk. So you can add regular milk, you can add soy milk. I use almond milk, um, but it just really helps um, kind of keep it nice and smooth. So I'm gonna do a little bit of honey here, stir it around. And I'm using local honey because I live in Austin, Texas, and that's just the smart thing to do because it's good for your allergies. And then once all the honey has come off the spoon, you'll add your milk. And I will just drink this all day. And it's a great substitute for coffee or other things that you might drink to keep your energy up. Oh, so beautiful. Yeah, really went for the milk. 
And then one last little stir and one last little inhale and exhale of love. All right, and there we have it. Made with love, a traditional yogi tea. Let's give it a taste. Mm. It really is so good. It really does take me way back. So sweet. All right, from my heart to yours, namaste. Enjoy your yogi tea. Leave questions, comments below. Let me know how it goes and let's stay connected. Take care, my friends. Namaste.